So this video is for a recent project which was um, a restoration of um, an Aspen's pinball table, or Aspen by Briarwood. Now this was um, a home pinball table and I actually bought this off of Craigslist for 50 bucks and it was in kind of a bad way uh, the when I built it, uh, or sorry, when I picked it up. It actually needed um, rebuilding. I can show you uh, in here the board that uh, everything we had, uh, and as you can see, just here, there was a burnout of a transistor. There's another transistor missing here. Um, I believe that these transistors actually ran the um, the chime box, which had burned out. So my first thought was maybe okay, I can fix this uh, and get it running. Uh, so. I, what I was finding is that, that the table was tilting on one of the columns for the, um, the switch matrix. And so I traced it back thinking maybe it was just a short, uh, but I actually couldn't find anything wrong, dug into it with a, a multimeter. And so I actually traced it back down to this chip here uh, as a fault. And looking this up, this actually seems to be a custom chip that was built by a semiconductors manufacturer that, that folded in around about 79, I think. The table came out in 77. So there's absolutely no way of getting another of these chips. What I did find though was the person that had um, purchased all of the uh, parts for the Briarwood, um, from Briarwood, all the pinball parts, actually had one of these brand new. And so I phoned them up and I uh, attempted to get a price from them. They were kind of sheepish about telling me the price. Uh, and then they said, don't bother, this is $400. So we have a part in, in place, it's $400, but it's not worth it because the, the table's not even worth that. So, what I set about doing was actually to uh, completely rebuild the table uh, and rebuild it with an Arduino. So what I'm gonna do now is just show you some of the electronics behind that. So back here, what you can see is the uh, custom board that I built for this. Now, one of the, the various mistakes that I made with this project, and there were a number, um, was I decided for some reason, I can't remember, the logic escapes me now. I was somewhat confident there was a short somewhere in the um, switch matrix, so I decided to hand wire this as a non-matrixed. Um, and it was a lot, of, a lot of time. So you can see here that there's three connections in, um, and these all directly connect to um, a common ground switches for the scoreboard, um, sorry, for the play field. This was a lot of work to do this and it was kind of a mistake, but it does now work. I think the logic for me at the time was like, okay, well, in not matrixing them, then you're not gonna get such a, not have to have such a heavy debounce time and you might get a little bit better response, particularly for the, sw the spinners. Um, but it works now, like I say, and it, it just uh, connects directly into the um, into the Arduino where you've got a pull-up resistor, the internal pull-up resistor switched on, and there's just a common ground behind all the switches. Uh, this connector here goes off towards the uh, school board which is um, eight, seven segment displays and there's a custom 3D br uh, printed bracket that I've put in here. Um, another funny little issue that I had with this was the uh, the front glass here was actually uh, blue tinted and because the digits were red, when you actually put it behind there, you couldn't see it. So I masked off some of the area and just used some rubbing alcohol to remove it so I had a clear window and then put in this, this black foam around the edge, which is like, I think they call it funky foam, uh, just to mask it out. Um, that was kind of nice. And down here we've got a uh, another board. This does, does two things. Firstly, it takes the um, the 28 volts in from the power supply and it smooths it um, and it regulates it. So I had a bunch of problems with transistors and driving stuff on this board and it was because there's the two um, the two poles for 28 volts and 6 volts were actually completely isolated, they were two separate circuits. And so what I was seeing is the transistors, um, the, from the logic level on the board, weren't firing the transistors for the the other rail, for um, say for example the ball return which runs up to 28 volts. So what I had to do was take the 28 volts, um, use a smoothing capacitor because it's entirely unsmoothed, um, it just comes straight out of the, looking at the, the diagram, it comes straight out of the um, power supply as a, as a just bridge rectified, so it's uh, full wave rectification but no smoothing. Then put in this regulator here, which was the original regulator taken off the board, uh, 
this dispose board here. Um, and then from that, I can drive anything I need. This big, uh, just using a bunch of tip 120s. So the things that are driven in the, uh, the machine right now are, <coughs> excuse me, the um, tilt relay. So when it tilts, it turns off the uh, flippers. You've also got um, the three chimes, which when I got it were actually burnt out. I think what caused the board to fail or vice versa. Uh, and then this is the ball return, which is actually a tip 140. So that's that. Uh, like I say, that was like a, it took me a long time to figure out that those two rails were isolated on the power supply, which seems kind of super weird, but I mean, this is an old machine, so who knows why they were doing that. Uh, and then finally up here on the board, you've got a little mini speaker. But like I say, we've got internally some, uh, <coughs> excuse me, some uh, chimes, which I actually went and rebuilt. Uh, so I'll show you inside the, the table next. Okay, so this is the um, the underside of the playfield here. And as you can see, all of these playfield switches have been uh, rewired by me. And like I say, that was probably one of the most time consuming mistakes that I made on the, the table other than the problem with the power supply and the, the uh, isolated rails. Uh, everything was kind of working, everything was in a reasonably good state. These flippers actually needed, a, or still do need a rebuild. Um, they're not in the best way, you can actually see the shaft here, it's like a little bit worn. Um, these are kind of super hard to get, so one of the things that I did find with uh, trying to get parts for this was that generally just people didn't know what it was. When you go to like a, a pinball uh, repair and maintenance shop, like a lot of people just don't know what this is, because um, it's kind of an unusual table and it's a home table it's not really meant for commercial use and uh, I don't think they sold a great deal of them so the as you can see all of this was like uh, hand rewired everything else was pretty good um, I did solder these in I took off the uh, the connectors and I think that's good practice uh, from my understanding from pinball maintenance is actually wherever you've got a solenoid rather than having a, a crimp connector which can come off over time this is much better to because it's actually quite a fast moving part with a little bit of power behind it that uh, you're actually better off uh, to, you can see that, uh, you're actually better off to, to solder those. So that was one change that I did make. Um, there's some kickers here, Some these are the, uh, the, the kickers for the bumpers down by the flippers at the lower level. And again, you've got uh, a pop bumper here. So this actually was another thing that I, I rebuilt, I spent a bunch of time if I can get in there. Um, I'm actually going to post a picture with this as well. I don't know if you can see. This is the chime box. So whenever you score, these uh, hammers kind of fire up and will will hit these chimes up here, which will uh, make the noise for different scores. So there's three different tones there. And these were actually burnt out pretty badly. And like I say, I'll include a, a photo as well on my blog when I when I, up, I upload these, uh, so you can see what what can happen, what happened with those. And uh, so I rebuilt those with some matching part. These are actually uh, Williams solenoids, which are equivalents and work pretty well. Uh, and then when you come down here, they've got these these flippers, flipper buttons here. Um, I actually, I don't know if you can see, maybe you can see it better, slightly better on this side. Um, these were, again, this is 3D printed, so this is a custom file that I created, uh, and I'll link to Thingiverse for this as well. Um, so if you do have similar buttons on your table and you need a bracket for them, then this thing you can just download and, and uh, print. And down here, this is the, the tilt plunger that we've got. And you can see that makes a noise when you tilt. Do it three times. There you go. That's the tilt relay is off there. Uh, so there we go. That's it. I'll put the code in um, up for the Arduino. Oh, and actually, there's a few things I want to show you on the, the play field. So uh, before I get to that, I'll just show you some of the, the upgrades on what I've put on. And just to end this video, I wanted to show you uh, the playfield. So when I got this, the all the rubbers were really bad and were kind of disintegrated and just flaky and would, would crack off pretty easily. So uh, I was actually lucky enough to find someone that was selling a, a super kit. And that super kit included um, brand new springs for the plunger, uh, a new ball, and all of the rubbers. Actually, when it was sent through, some of the rubbers were actually missing, so I had to go back and get some more. Um, and also a whole bunch of uh, replacement lights as well for everywhere around the table. Now actually what I did do uh, was at the Tacoma, I think it's called the Pacific Southwest Pinball, Pinball Convention, was I picked up a set of LEDs for this. 
Um, so it's actually all of the playfield has been completely repaired. Uh, sorry, completely uh, modified with brand new LEDs. So these actually shine really bright, bright, and they look really good. I did forget to pick up some of the uh, the back glass, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, the, it actually makes the playfield a lot brighter because it was kind of a dim table, particularly if you, in the dark. It was it was pretty tough to see. So uh, yeah, I can I cleared. I'd actually use some solvents to clean up some of this uh, playfield and then use like a special wax cleaner uh, and the same for all the plastics. So pretty much took everything off um, and then rebuilt the code. So in my blog I'm also going to include the code for the Arduino um, and that's set up specifically for the, the original scoring on the table. I was going to add in some additional modes and stuff. Um, I do feel that's probably not something I wanted to go ahead with, with doing. Uh, so the table probably as it is now uh, does allow for additional upgrades or software updates at least. Um, so yeah, you can, you can see this actually works now pretty well. Um, and ball drain, and then it will fire back up. So it's actually set up for a multi-ball play again. Uh, and it's back in the plunger lane, so it returns it. Um, and like I say, you've got the the different uh, coils going there as well for shooting different the different chimes. So this has been a really fun project for me. Um, it's been kind of challenging and at times quite frustrating, um, but there's good reason to why I did it. So the table actually kind of sucks. It's not the best pinball table by a long stretch. Um, it ended up costing me $50 to buy the table and I probably spent another two to 250 on it. So maybe it's cost me $300 all in all, uh, which I could have just bought a working table, a equivalent table. Um, but for me, <coughs> part of the reason why I wanted to do this was I'd not really worked with pinball tables or kind of electromechanical projects before. So it was a big challenge. There was a lot of things that uh, I didn't really know how it worked or I kind of had a, an inclination from reading about pinball and being a pinball fan. But actually building this and building all of the electronics as well, um, behind the back glass, uh, all of the control electronics taught me quite a lot, um, helped me improve a lot of my coding. So it's really just like an educational project and it's been a lot of fun and something I'm really proud of. It's by far the biggest uh, electronics project that I've ever that I've done to date. So there you go. I'll post some more details on my blog, so do read up on that and there'll be a bunch of links as well in the bottom of this video. Thanks.